Hello, today I'm going to be sharing with you tips and tricks that I use in Excel to use the software more efficiently. Overall, this video is going to help you get more familiar with functions and shortcuts that should help you solve problems more efficiently within Excel. The first tip is how to paste formulas over a different range more efficiently. So right now, let's calculate the gross profit and then gross profit margin. And I want to apply this formula over this entire data set here. Now, if you're doing this manually, it might look something like this, or it might look something like this. Now you can see that as your data set grows larger, it will take you much more longer to paste your formula over that range. So instead, what you can do is copy the formula, select a cell within your source data, and then press control down. And then you would go back to the range that you want to paste the formula in, and then press control shift up, and then press Control V. Because you want to apply the formula to your entire source data, you can just press Control down while you're selecting the source data to go to the end, and then you can press Control shift up which will go to the beginning. However, if you just press Control shift down from the top, it will go all the way to the end of the worksheet, which is not something that you want. Another way is to press Control shift end which will select all the cells starting from where you have selected to the end of the worksheet. Now the end of the worksheet is determined by the latest column that was edited and the latest row that was edited. And then you could just press control V to paste the formulas as well. However, if we go through one more example, if I press control shift end here, it will actually get me to row 127 because row 127 is the latest row that was edited, as you can see here. However, I only want to apply the formula up to row 50, which is my source data. So in this case, you can also just go back to your source data, press control down, then select the range that you want to paste the formula in, press control shift up, and then press control V to paste the formula over this range. Now, one last way is to use the control G key. So essentially, the previous method is efficient in getting us to cell J50 because we can just press Control shift up to select the entire range that we want to paste the formula in. However, if I know that I want to get my cell selection to cell J50, I can just press Control G and then within my reference, I'm going to type J50. And if I press OK, it will navigate me to that cell location directly. And then I can just press Control shift up control V again to paste the formula over this range. So these are three different methods that you can use to paste formulas over a different range more efficiently. First is to select your source data, control down to go to the end, and then go back to where you want to paste the formula, control shift up, and then paste the formula. The other way is that if there aren't any unnecessary data in your worksheet, you can press control shift end, which should get you to the end of the source data as well. But again, if you have unnecessary data, it will get you much further than you need to. And then lastly, you can press Control G to manually navigate to a specific location and then select the range that you want to apply the formula in. So these three tips should really help you save a lot of time when you need to paste formulas in a different range. The next tip that I want to share with you is how to adjust column width and how you should adjust column width. A lot of the width adjustments are within this format function here under these three categories of column width, auto fit column width, and then default width. To access these using a shortcut, you can press Alt, H, and then the O key. So this will open the format, and then you can either press W, I, or D to access any of these functions. So auto fit column width is very useful because in often cases, your data is going to look a little jammed like this and you can't really analyze or read the data. So you'll press Alt H O I to auto fit the column width, which will expand based on your largest value that you've selected. However, there are also cases where you don't want to auto fit, but you want to size all the columns evenly. For example, I have all this financial data here. And if I press Alt H O I to auto fit, Notice how some of the months with the longer name have a larger column size, and then some of the months with the smaller column name have a smaller column size. 
In terms of looking at financials, this is very messy and you don't want uneven sized columns. In this case, you can press Alt-H-O-W and here you can manually set your column width. Now this is more of a trial and error, so I could start with 15. To me, this looks too wide, so I'll press Alt-H-O-W again, try 11, and this looks a little bit more moderate. The last efficient way to adjust the size of a column is I'll press Auto Size again, and I could tell that September is probably the largest sized column. I can copy any cell in column L, highlight the range that I want to adjust the column width for, press Control Alt V, and I can actually paste the column width. So essentially, I'm copying the column width in column L and applying that size to this range that I've selected. So it will auto size everything based on the size of column L. There's use cases for all three methods, but essentially auto sizing helps when you need to just expand the data so that you can read it. You want to leverage the manual sized columns if you want to evenly space out all the data for presentation purposes. And you can also leverage the Control Alt V Paste Special to copy the size of a specific column and apply it to all the other columns as well. The next tip that I wanna share is formatting. So formatting is very important in FPNA. You really need to make sure that your presentation looks professional and is very clear. This is why you'll often notice a lot of formatting. One of the most efficient ways that you could tackle formatting is to copy the formatting from one place to another. So right now I want to calculate the variance. And if I were to just calculate the variance, I would subtract one by the other. And from a presentation purpose, this doesn't look that clean. You wanna make sure that this formatting is also applied here as well. Now, if you were to do this manually, you would have to highlight border this, 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 and all that. Instead, you can copy the formatting from one place and then press Control Alt V, and then you could copy the formatting over to this other range that you have here. Now, let's say that for my expenses, I want to actually do the reverse where I want to subtract budget minus actuals. Now, when I copy this formula down, notice how the formatting goes away for this cell location. And that's because when you copy over a cell and you paste this somewhere else normally, it's going to copy over everything. So it's going to copy over the format and the formula. However, in this case, we don't want to overwrite the formatting here. So what we can also do is press Control Alt V and you can only copy and paste the formula. So it will retain the format that it had here before. Similarly, if I were to copy this and paste it here, notice how it copies over the format as well. Instead, I can just press Control Alt V formula and it will only copy the formula and not the format. Because presentation is so important for financial analysis, you will often be working with formats a lot and the Control Alt V shortcut to open this paste special is a very helpful tool to save time whenever you need to work on formatting. The next tip is going to be cell alignment. This is almost like an unspoken rule in Excel where you never want to merge columns. For example, I have the sales data of the different teams by quarter. From a presentation purpose, I want these three cells to be merged and these three cells to be merged. Now what happens when you merge and center is that when you press control space to select an entire column, it is going to select all three columns rather than just column E. And also you'll notice that if I start highlighting and I hover over row four, which has a merge cell, it's instead going to select all the columns that are merged rather than just column E. Whenever you're building formulas in another sheet and you have to reference data here, it becomes really inefficient because of this merged cell. So instead of merging columns, what people actually do is they will go to format here and press format cells, or you could also press control one to open this exact same page, go to alignment, and then under horizontal, you want to press center across selection. So what this will do is it will center the value across the cells that you've selected, but it will still treat each different cell separately. So now if I press control space to select column E, I won't have any issue selecting over the range that centered the value. Similarly to here, we can do the same thing. This is a golden rule, never merge columns, always use the alignment function that you have here. Unfortunately for rows, there isn't a better alternative. So if you're ever merging rows, you would just merge using the merge function as you normally would. The next tip is referencing ranges. So in this case, I want to capture the total cost 
by the different initiatives presented here. Now, when you reference these ranges, you have two options. You have one option to select specifically the data that you're analyzing. So sell G5 to G25, or you can actually select all of column G. In most cases, it's more efficient to just select the entire column because when you add data in the future, this formula will already account for any new additions. So if I were to set up the sum ifs function normally, and I captured cost by the initiative, so 49,000, and let's say that I wanted to add one more data set here for 8,000. Notice how the results still don't change because the reference does not capture the newly added data. However, let's get rid of this. Let's use the sum ifs function again. This time we're going to select the entire column. And now if I were to add this new project for 8,000, notice how the amount updated from 49,000 to 57,000 because the reference accounts for the entire column. So any new additions are automatically captured. Now you do have to be a little bit aware because if you're referencing the entire column and let's say like there's fake data here that also has like similar data sets, it's going to capture that as well. So you have to be sort of careful on when you use this. And if you are going to reference the entire column, you have to be a bit strategic in how you set up the data as well. But it's really helpful to know that referencing the entire column is a very efficient approach in capturing data because you don't have to always update your formula ranges whenever there is new data. The last tip that I want to share with you is again, referencing cells. But this time, I'm going to share with you a tip that not a lot of people actually use, but it is still very practical. So let's say that we have the source data here with sales by product and quarter. And in our source data, we have quarter two and quarter one. I have two different tabs that are meant to capture sales by quarter two and quarter one. Let's sum ifs the sales data where the product matches the product here and then the quarter matches the quarter here. Let's apply this and let's actually copy this over to the next tab as well. Now what you're going to notice is that the result is exactly the same when it should not be. And that is because this formula is referencing the tab analysis one rather than cell C5 or the current tab. So what happens is that if you reference a different tab, and then you switch back to your current tab, it is going to only capture or reference the cell in your current tab. So you can't really copy it over to a different tab without changing the formula. So what you'll often notice that I do in my video is that I will sum ifs and select my criteria range. When I need to reference a cell in the current tab that I'm analyzing, I usually just type a zero and then I'll select my second range and then type a zero again. And then once I'm back in my current tab, I'll just manually replace the zeros with the cells that I want to reference. Essentially what happens is that it will no longer reference the current tab only. It is only going to reference that cell location. So if I copy this formula over to the next tab, it is going to capture the same cell location, but instead of capturing analysis one, it will capture the current tab like this. This is a very helpful practice because it helps you efficiently copy over existing formulas to different tabs without having to always change what tab is referencing. And with this covers my tips and tricks part one for Excel. In the next video, I'll also cover tips and tricks, but focus more on the analysis aspect rather than just using Excel. I highly recommend for you to download this worksheet and then test it yourself to improve how you use Excel as a whole. If you have any questions, always feel free to message or email me and I will see you in the next video. Bye.